Great. Let's get started, guys. Good morning. Thanks for joining Elite CISO's weekly session that we conduct every week on Thursday, 11 o'clock India time. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome uh, MicroFocus team. Uh, Mr. Sashi and Mr. Neeraj uh, are there with us to talk about a very interesting topic around SOC trends, right? The title is SOC trends shaping the future of cybersecurity. This is our last one, I believe, in the three webinar series that we have. So, the previous two sessions were, were phenomenally delivered. I'm very, uh, I'm looking forward for this excellent session again. I'm sure Neeraj and Sashi will, will keep you engaged and share new thoughts around SOC trends. We are recording the session, as I mentioned initially. All the sessions that we record, they go on Elite CISO's YouTube channel. So if you would like to see previous recording, uh, previous sessions, you can go to YouTube and you can watch those sessions as well. So as you look at the agenda, it's quick, 11 to 11.05, a quick welcome. And then we will have about 45 minutes for micro focus session. And then at the end, we, we try to finish within 10 minutes, but we might spill five minutes over because there are a lot of activities that we got to do. So we'll, we'll pick uh, question answers, live question answers. And then after that, I will talk about CP certificate. CP is something we give a participation certificate, right? So there are a lot of new people joining today. So that's why I'm talking about uh, certificates and all explaining about it. So you get an attendance certificate. I will share the secret to download the certificate. We will have Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune is our legacy fun item at the end uh, that we that we do. So we put your name in a Wheel of Fortune. We spin the wheel and then one lucky winner uh, gets, gets an award, right? So today the award is going to be a smart watch for Wheel of Fortune. So we'll have three sets of Wheel of Fortune. In total, there are five uh, smart watches as giveaway. And then we have a LinkedIn contest as well, right? This is our third time we are running this LinkedIn contest. Every series, every uh, session we had done this. So the winner for the LinkedIn contest is going to get an Apple AirPod, right? So last week uh, when we had this session, I think the last session was on uh, 24th of February. So on 24th of February, we had the similar LinkedIn contest and the winner for that contest or from that contest is Mr. Kiran Balselkar, right? Uh, he's SVP at Agon Life. Uh, congratulations, uh, Mr. Kiran. Are you there in the session? Let me see if you're there, go to the chat and say, hi, you are there. Oh, Kiran, great, you are there. Congratulations. So you got a brand new Apple AirPods. I'm sure uh, you will enjoy it. So uh, I'll ping you after the session. I'll take your address and then we will get it delivered. Now, uh, look, at the, look at the contest rule, guys. Okay, pay attention over here because this contest is for next week. Okay. Next week in the sense, the, the session that we are delivering now, uh, you will have one week time to post on LinkedIn, right? What you got to post is, this is the contest rules that are coming on the next slide. Pay very close attention to it guys. Okay. Very simple steps are there. All you have to do is you have to follow elite CISO handle on LinkedIn. You have to follow micro focus handle on LinkedIn and then share your learning from this session, okay? So whatever whatever uh, uh, Sashi and Neeraj are going to talk about, you have to take good notes of those, uh, those uh, you know, pointers and the discussion. And then what you understand from the session, take the learning, put it on LinkedIn, okay? Along with the certificate that we are going to issue. That's what you got to do, very simple. I will show you an example what Mr. Kiran had posted. So if you look at Mr. Kiran's post, he has tagged Elite CISO, he has tagged MicroFocus, and then he talked about the learning from the previous session. So all these learnings are there uh, from the previous session. So if you simply go through this post, you will understand it's a very crisp information about the previous session. So that's what you got to do is uh, uh, take good notes, you know, uh, and then summarize that, go to LinkedIn, tag Elite CISO, tag MicroFocus, put the learnings over there, along with the certificate. Very important guys, right? Don't miss these steps. So you have to download the certificate. I will share how you can download the certificate. Go to LinkedIn, tag Elite CISO, uh, tag MicroFocus, and then share your learning. These are the basic steps that you got to do for the contest. If you have any question, you can ping me separately. You can put it on the chat later on as well, because you will have at least one week to uh, make a post on LinkedIn. Okay, guys, that's about the contest. And then in every session, we do something which is known as stand and attend, right? 
so what is stand and attend if you are going to sit for the entire day you might have all these problems this is something uh, we do not want right so we give this challenge new guys those who are joined for the very first time so this is a challenge we given every single webinar and we have been giving from past three years right what we tell you is that for elite ciso webinar when you are attending it stand it right like i'm standing so if you stand you you will not have all these problems on the left hand side but with your standing you will have a reduction in pain you will lose more calorie your posture will be better and then you will be focused on the session as it says better brain function so if your brain is going to function better you are going to understand the session better you are going to make a good linkedin post and you might win a apple airport as well and this challenge is for everyone right for shashi and neeraj as well i'm not sure how you are placed can you stand and present or not but it's okay okay guys great so if you accept the challenge go to the chat and say yes you are accepting the challenge i love the energy that you guys share on the on the chat so really appreciate you guys accepting the challenge stand and attend with this let me transfer it over to mr shashi over to you chief thank you so much uh, vikas and and uh, thank you everyone um, welcome to the third session on micro focus uh, elite ciso and we are very happy to uh, participate in this and this is the last one um, uh, uh, from the series and we'll definitely be uh, having uh, more so just give you a background uh, as to what we do uh, because some of you might be joining uh, first time uh, from a uh, see today if you look at uh, the there's a paradigm shift into uh, the threat landscape uh we have seen a uh, pretty recent examples uh, uh you know from russia where cyber attacks are uh, very pertinent and happening around it india also if you look at lot of attacks which has happened uh, uh, across and if i if i give you some statistics uh, you know uh, 26000 um, uh, websites you know for government websites is being hacked in 2000 Uh, 21 now one of the biggest challenge what we are seeing today um, uh, around three pillars right uh, one which is very important pillar because that's being uh, one is the data uh, uh, pillar second is the applications um, and uh, the identity now if we if we further divide into all these pillars if you look at applications today applications play major role in everyone's life on a day to day basis along with the enterprises and the corporate uh, and the uh, government customer right applications are being developed so we have in one of our uh, sessions we uh, did cover around application security how how do we uh, uh, secure your uh, uh, you know sdlc uh, complete life cycle uh, from the time you are developing the code for, uh, till the time uh, the code is in uh, production right Uh, to make sure we are we are helping our customer uh, integrate the security into uh, their uh, you know software development life cycle that's one uh, second session what we covered uh, around the identity and access management now we all have heard about uh, zero trust frame framework right uh, today as we are seeing from last 3 years um, um, people are mostly working from home uh identity has become very critical uh, security threat for most of the organizations so keeping that in mind we thought of uh, you know having that as a second session we have covered around uh, our identity and access uh, management portfolio if you guys have not gone through it as vikas mentioned please go to the uh, elite ciso website you can uh, you can see the uh, recording uh today being the uh, third session uh, before i get into the third session i would like to uh, talk about uh, third pillar which i have i've discussed around data uh if, if you look at uh, if you take an example of your own uh, you have a mobile where data um, earlier we used to have 4 mb of data card now um a 256 gb or maybe 1 tb is not good enough to store those uh, uh, that data and similar is uh, similar things are happening across data is being generated from the applications data is being generated from individual desktops data is being generated from 
you know, um, copied from internet. So a huge chunk of data which is there. And that's the most critical and um, uh, that's the most critical and the biggest threat for any organization. If you, if you look at all the uh, frameworks which are there, um, likes of GDPR or the RBI guidelines, or we, we talk about uh, SOX compliance, so PCI, every framework, or the, every compliance regulation talks about securing the data personal as well as corporate data. Uh, Microfocus plays a very pivotal and critical role around that. We have technology uh, which we might be covering in uh, coming ELA, um, um, ETC so sessions. Uh, you know, how do I make sure that I am I'm securing the data from the time it is being generated so that when it is in transit and reaching to the other side of the uh, customer, it is all secure. No man in the middle attack can happen uh, on that data. Uh, so, so that's that's very critical piece. So, uh, we did talk about application data and identity. Now, let me get into today's session, which is very uh, important. Uh, see. Those are the days, uh, gone are the days when, when um, a SIM was being treated as a, as a dumb device where it is collecting the log, giving you some meaningful information. Now we are talking about a next generation, uh, a next generation SOC where artificial intelligence is built in, analytics has built in, right? Uh, if you, if, if micro from a micro focus perspective, we are leading the uh, chart in India. We have around 100 plus customers uh, uh, leveraging and using our technology uh, within their uh, security operation center. Uh, and the second area which is uh, which we are focusing big time is uh, the managed security platform. Uh, we have 300 plus customer uh, who are using our managed security services. Uh, uh, leveraging the managed security services uh, uh, also. With that said, um, let me let me uh, not waste much time. Give more time to Neeraj. Um, Neeraj, before we start, uh, as we have seen, security operation is seeing a paradigm shift from only lock collection and correlation to now uh, orchestration and threat intel feed has become a very critical uh, pillar for any organization to get a global view actually right today most of the organizations are looking at rebuilding uh, uh, their SOC to the next generation SOC uh, if I may call it what's your view to what degree it helped organization to deal with latest security attacks yeah well said Sashi so uh, good morning everyone I'm I uh, hope audible yeah you're audible Okay, yeah, thanks, thank thanks Vikas. Yeah, so, so when we look at security operations uh, evolve to multiple change, uh, changes and it build the decent libraries of standard operating uh, procedures to program your security orchestration through automation. So your SOC or security operation center, de cyber defense operation center, fusion center, which are having higher maturity are getting benefited with the automation and one which are still not mature and on the journey is learn and adopt to the automation. Excellent. Thank you. I know I know you will be covering this in detail in your uh, you know, uh, session. I have a couple of more questions before I hand it over to you. Um, as we have seen, uh, you know, customer has always looks at improving total cost of ownership for any solution uh, they are using in their environment. And due to this pandemic, uh, even budgets across the boards are uh, slashed further. So while organizations is still looking to strengthen their security monitoring and lightweight investment, or I would say low capex uh, model, uh, what's your op opinion? How do you see this uh, change which is happening? Yeah, so that's the valid uh, point and keep coming into all the forums and uh, the discussions. So I'm witness to see uh, the adoption of managed security services model, which reduces the capex drastically while providing the expert security intelligence monitoring framework from day one for the customer. So we do have the slide. We will talk about how it can benefit customer to reduce the capex while giving the full intelligence framework from day one to be available. Thanks, Nils. Um, the last one, uh, basically, 
you know, um, around, uh, again, around the analytics, uh, which I talk about the kind of data being generated today, if you see, and the threat, uh, which are targeting uh, uh, most of the organization, uh, uh, you know, uh, analytics is playing what we see, uh, I see, and, and everybody else is also uh, will agree to it. Analytics is playing pivotal role. And uh, people have started talking about analytics everywhere. And if, if we see most of the tools which are there are getting evolved with analytics, what's your thought around security analytics and how critical it is for uh, uh, the organizations? Yeah, so indeed, uh, so if you talk about few years back, analytics was just a buzzword. It was just getting, you know, we are having analytics, AI, ML, data science, all that. But now analytics uh, are now part of all the tool fabric. And that's something which is derived by the data model or the artificial intelligence, machine learning. And we talk, we know about the machine learning having the branches like supervised machine learning and the unsupervised machine learning. So under supervised machine learning, uh, due to the decay of the data, the mining is still making it more meaningful for the analytics to go easy going. And while we talk about the unsupervised machine learning, it learned behavior based on the underlying data model. It learned from the ecosystem. Available some of the out of the box options as a data model and something where the engine provide a capability to custom tailor the data model. So it's picking up a rapid pace by incorporating the layered approach on the analytics. So again, the layered analytics, which is a key proposition from micro focus, cyber resilience, which we'll cover in the slides. Thank you so much, Neerit. And, and um, um, again, I want to welcome everyone uh, to this uh, uh, session. And I would request we'll try to cover it up on time uh, to give you some time to ask questions. Uh, uh, if you have questions, please put it on uh, the chat uh, box and we'll be more than happy to uh, uh, answer those questions. With that said, uh, uh, over to you, Neeraj. Thanks, Sashi. So I'm just sharing my screen. Uh, you know, can you start with your uh, a little intro about you uh, while you yeah. get up sure, with the sure. slides and all? You missed that. Yeah, we'll do that. So I'm just. Perfect. Thanks, yeah. So, yeah. So good. Good morning, everyone. And uh, I want to thank everyone to take out their time from the busy schedule to join this session. Uh, a quick introduction. My name is Neera Chand Pandey. I'm a business development manager for Microfocus Cyberus India, and I have experience and learning from Security Operations Center project for almost 15 years now. So today I'll be going to cover about the concept of the SOC trends the rising the rising risk it possesses to organizations like yours the enterprise the government and how oxide tackle this problem from multiple angles to reduce your exposure and enable the greater cyber resilience okay so as as the, as the word cyberspace continues to expand and so do its attack surface and the threat vector so the risk of exposure to threat and breaches continues risk year after year. And according to the research by risk-based security, in the first half of 2021, there was almost 1,700 data breaches which exposed over 18 billion records. Breaches that exposes the sensitive assets, the data to your organization can result in fine, your reputation loss, your disruption of the service, loss with and significantly lost in your market. So one study found that in the case of the confirmed data breaches, the average total cost of breach announced to over 4 million US dollars. And one of the biggest contributing factor to this high cost was extended length of to identify and containing the breaches. So which on an average amount, we got 287 days normally it takes to identify the kind of delayed attack. So longer it takes you to address a breach, the greater the exposure and the more costly it becomes. So every second matter. So that is the risk of the exposure. Now, one of the most 
critical roles of your security operation team is responsibility to limit your organization business risk by reducing its exposure to breaches and other significant security threats. So how an organization can reduce their exposure time. So if, if you look at to mitigate a threat uh, in, in any own environment, you first need to know that it exists. You need to detect. So that need to combat is quickly and effectively as possible. So as such, if you look at exposure time is a function which is detection time and your response time both. So both need to be addressed if you wish to cut down your exposure time. So it does not do a, a great job to discover a threat quickly if you cannot quickly respond to it. And likewise, the ability to quickly respond will not help it if it takes longer time, weeks or months to get it identified or get it discovered. So it both ways is important that if you want to reduce your exposure time, you have to have the early detection and the response. So, yeah. So looking at the, the reducing the, the different size, size of it, what we have seen the, re, the reduction of detection and response time is becoming increasingly difficult for security operation team. And Cyber S2021 state of security operation report found that 79% of SOC has, or the organization has increased their deployment of advanced security technologies in the past one year. During this pandemic, they have adopted, they have uh, onboarded a lot of security technologies. While the SecOps team still struggle to preemptively detect threat and reducing the exposure. So the report also found the top challenge facing security team in 2021 was their struggle to monitor a rapidly expanding attack surface that resulted from COVID-19 and the global shift to remote work. So while organizations are increasing and the investment into security operations, they're still having a hard time to reduce their exposure time across growing and widen the attack surface. So you can read it out uh, from the slide, which will be shared later on after this session, the source of this 2021 state of security operation report. All right. So as we can see, reducing this threat exposure can be very tricky for, for tricky tasks for your security operation team. And SOCs like yours are going up against a wide variety of cyber threat. So this include most common threat that follow established attack pattern, such as phishing, PowerShell, brute force technologies, and just a name to few. But your organization also faces uh, the newer threat, more uh, intuitive threat that continue to evolve, such as insider threat, advanced persistent threat, and the elusive threat that continuously challenge the detection capabilities of the SOC and evolving and dynamically changing the pattern globally. Whether it is a known or unknown threat, the longer it goes undetected, unaddressed, the more damage it can do to your business critical assets. So there are many different security technologies out there that specialize in detection capabilities, uh, the different type of threats, but that's often silos, standalone solution. They are not collaborating. They are not sharing the intelligence. They do their best to catch threat, but in the end, they just overwhelm your analyst to, to give a flood of the false positive, the false of uh, the alerts and the disjoint interfaces, which has to be managed by the security operation team. So they often rely on a lot of manual processes uh, followed under the security operation procedure as well, which is particularly problematic due to the ongoing skill shortage. We know that the, these are talent war, the shortage of the skill into the security operation. We need to have the data scientists, hunters, and these are where the, uh, the, the cybersecurity industry is facing challenges. So resources are quickly overwhelmed, uh, slowing the investigation responses and giving the threat vector even more time to harm your organization. So in the end, SecOps team are left with a dire need to reducing their exposure time through faster, more accurate threat detection and the response. So cyber, okay, so we, we, have, we have talked about how the, it, it is shaping, how to reduce the exposure time, but when we look at the cyber risk, micro focus, understand the struggle. 
and we can help your organization to solve this issue end to end security operation platform and enable you to get your risk of the exposure time under control by enabling your security team to quickly and accurately detect and respond to your threats so our arcsight platform employ a layered analytics approach that allow you to collect normalizes all your security event data in your organization as it occurs and then analyzes with the multiple threat analytics tool including the real time correlation your behavior analytics and the big data threat hunting to provide a comprehensive threat detection of both known and unknown attacks so what we talked about is in the earlier era of the security operation it was more kind of supervised known kind of attack which was detected by the correlation engine but as the threat landscape was dynamic got changed and it was having lot of unknown or the kind of attack which was not seen not defined not crafted and available under your soc so we made a unknown side of the engine to work and learn from the behavior from your user from your entities from your network devices and doing the unknown and known attacks to get correlated to identify the highly qualified security risk activities to get detected and responded and the best part the solution are not siloed so arcsight layer these analytics uh, analytics layers together to maximize context insight and centralizes the result of each layer through a single interfaces so you don't need to have a multiple interfaces one where you can get to know about the alert you have to do a investigation workbench you need a audit workbench you need a response engine to see how the cases are getting operated in a manual way semi automated or fully automated it is a disjoint interface which has which has to be navigated by the security operation team so what we did we made it a unified single pane of glass to monitor everything for security operation team allow your team to quickly visualize and identify analyze the most severe threat facilitating or facing to your organization the last uh, arcsight native or embedded sure capabilities then further reduces your exposure time by orchestrating and automating your repeated analysis task and by facilitating rapid automated threat responses to reduce your mean time to respond it is turnaround time so now we'll let's dig into the details of each of these offering okay cool so as i mentioned before arcsight employ multiple security analytics to, to cast a wide detection and uncover the threat and the comprehensive as possible so most of you are must be aware about the arcsight correlation capabilities widely used known and uh, it it is something which is called as uh, real time or in in memory correlation so it's a industry leading correlation engine which is arcsight enterprise security manager and it scalably ingest and correlate even in real time using very powerful adoptable rules and the risk scoring capability to enable your organization with near immediate detection and escalation of the event or the threat following the known attack pattern so integration with the threat intelligence solution what it does it integrate with the malware information sharing platform anomaly misp anomalies keeps arcsight up to date and extend its threat detection coverage to include all these iocs which would your suspicious ip address suspicious domain address your file hashes url all these iocs are getting updated with the exploit type with the reputation score getting from almost 500 plus communities and seeding the intelligence your your soc as a core of your esm correlation engine to act upon all the attack all the cnc communication so but what about the unknown we have talked about the known which is defined as a rule book defined as a policy defined as a signature as a use case under your esm but what about your unknowns undocumented threats so arcsight intelligence monitor and establish your unique behavior baseline for all your users entities within your enterprise to uncover suspicious activities and the behavior so we know what is the the the, the normal behavior and anything which is 
outside the, the normal is known as abnormal out layer abnormality so what it does the backed by it, the, the intelligence backed by the unsupervised machine learning and over 4000 mathematical data models so as i said earlier the ai ml having the underneath data models so accept ensure your accurate behavior monitoring and risk scoring to optimize your security operation center leads and focus event on the highly risky threat including the elusive ones such as the insider threat so any kind of uh, that the use cases which would be more prone to the insider threat would be event frequency you have not seen certain kind of frequency in last one week one month or six months of the the data which you have profiled for a particular entity it can be a user or any network devices but suddenly it is more than 150 percent so that is the abnormality it is abnormal to a behavior of a network device of particular user you have not seen a user is trying to access certain things so the event rarity the event which was not observed in past but suddenly we are observing that kind of event. So rarity, the frequency, the peer analytics, all this is getting derived from the data model. Each event is getting evaluated with the 400 data models available out of the box. But as custom might interested to custom tailor and build new data model. So intelligence giving a capability customer to write the data model using the Python. So finally, what we accept also incorporate the big data anal analytics. So that has been optimized for the security operations and simplified for everyday use. It's backed up by the powerful visualization, anomaly detection, and the supervised machine learning. So accept recon uh, enable analysts to investigate proactively hunt for both known and unknown threat with the mountain of the data. So you complete hunting, why we came about the hunting capability should be part of the security operation because the way security operation center ingesting the volume variety and the velocity of the data, the zillion of the data is getting ingested and is it getting stored because of your compliance requirement. Now, in case of any attack, the data has to be searched, investigated, postmortem has to be done and it does not requiring any database administrator to operate. So that is what the big data analytics powered by the Vertica and embedded into Oxide Recon helps to address your threat hunting capability. All right, so, but unlike what we have talked about the security operations platform Oxide does not just deliver the variety of detection and the investigation techniques in silos. As I said, it was a different uh, glasses or the views for the security operation teams earlier, but Oxide goes even further by layered all these different interfaces, analytics engines together. Now having this communicate with each other, giving them a shared centralized interface to maximize contextual insight and the alert accuracy. So you can see uh, the Oxide Fusion interface, which is pictured here, Accept various component to enable your security operation team uh, to enable uh, with a single pane of glass that reduces your survival chair syndrome. What is a survival chair syndrome is all about adopting the some some of the interface which is already available. How you can have the service layer build on top of it and save your analyst time. So by merging this insight from multiple analytics tool onto a shared user interface. So it collectively analyze result and provide your team with a greater context behind each threat alert and risky user. So that is what it increases the accuracy of your SOC in separating the true threats from the false positive. You, you can e exactly pinpoint what are the highly qualified security threat factors or the lead which has to be get operated, managed by the security operation team. What is the SLA and if there's any SLA breach to your security operation center? What are the KPI we have assigned for the security operation team? How my SOC is shaping up? What is the current SOC health? How many cases are open, in process or closed? What is the total turnaround time to resolve the cases? So those are the complete and analytics context based or the administration incident handling capability is getting monitored with a layer analytics 
it's unified single interface. And finally, Oxide significantly reduces the response time by offering this native security orchestration and the automation response uh, capabilities, uh, which is free of charge with Oxide Precon and Oxide ESM. So the custom which are already on Oxide ESM, they are getting uh, uh, capability to onboard SOAR uh, with the services. And what it does, SOAR, automate your repetitive task and initiate the SWIFT threat responses with a number of sold features, what we known as a uh, run books or the playbooks, which is like a scenario driven playbooks and you can customize uh, case management. So it basically with the kind of uh, the, the period of the SOC maturity, you're already having the known problem which has to be responded with the known solution. And what you can do, you can program, you can have a robot in your SOC to, to, be, to be given a responsibility to act upon in, in, in fact, you can give a ownership of that robot, which is sold to act upon it by giving a complete access. And while giving the access, whatever action is getting taken, you also want the evidences has to be recorded as a audit trail, which can be further investigated in case if the event has to be rolled back or the action has to be rolled back. So it's pretty mature and evolving sort capability natively available with the ESM. Okay, so within the summary, what we have talked about Oxide is end-to-end -end your security operation platform that employ multiple advanced technology from machine adoption to layered analytics, and it helps you uh, making establishing our human intelligent machine that reduces both your detection time and your response time. So your organization can significantly reduces the threat exposure and risk with simultaneously increasing your team efficiency and overall effectiveness. So in this, this uh, logical design to illustrate the complete solution packaging. So what we did, we have uh, invested on a complete solution design. So highlighting block in purple are the license SKUs. While the other, all the yellow, which are packaged within the platform are not having any licensing overhead to the customers. All right. So as Shashi has already spoken in the, in the start of the session, uh, how we can have the offering or some packaging, some kind of model, which uh, will requiring to reduce the TCO for the customer which will help to have low, you know, the capex and where customer can benefit it with the advanced uh, intuitive security monitoring and the intelligence from day one. So that's the solution what we have with the micro focus from more than a decade. So if you look at the global MSSP coverage, we do have almost 30 large MSSP across the EPJ. It's, it's a, something which we are managing it for more than a decade. Within India, we do have the regional support, the 10 company, which is having more than 10 years of the experience on Oxide. So as Oxide is a pre, you know, you know, mature solution for more than two decades, we invested and we evolved from the managed security services. Our partner, our, the, the SI system integrator, trust and use our platform to provide services to their own customers. So we have onboarded almost 1,000 customers, which are covering all the different verticals with the FSI, government, commercial, enterprise, PSUs. And these are the indirect customer which is getting hosted on our MSS partners. We have seen significant exponential double digit growth in past three years. Because of this pandemic, where customer, the budgets are slashed, customer would like to have the easy onboarding, want to build a security operation, if they are having security operation, want to get to the next level by outsourcing the services, onboarding, collaborating the services. So we got all those kind of queries and the kind of requirement for the customer which got addressed with our MSSP offering. So we just captured one of the comment from the large Oxide MSSP, which said after trying to deploy other you know, solutions, we concluded Oxide is the best platform for MSSP. And the beauty of the solution, it is pay per use model. So you don't have to pay for the platform. The kind of security monitoring is completely drive and custom tailor based on your use cases. 
for the customer, which is more compliance driven, they can take the security services to adhere their regulatory requirement. For the customer, which is more prone or the reputation and want a threat to be monitored in real time, they can go for a real time monitoring, threat hunting, your IT operation. So there are different kind of business use cases which are available uh, with this MSSP partner handy and they have built these learning and experiences for, for you know, more than a decade. And then they can leverage for those customers to be available from day one. So these are the listed benefit what we have talked about. Uh, you don't need to have the investment to build the design with the architecture, doing those, uh, the heavy lifting, while it is simplified architecture available and depending upon your business use case will be available integrated wired with your ecosystem. So it will not requiring, it will not requiring the complete uh, setup to be built. It is a fast deployment by just integrating, ingesting, onboarding your data and giving your uh, security alerts or the kind of reporting for your compliances. So as they do have the decent security operation team, which is providing the managed security services around this platform, the turnaround time to respond, to give an alert, to give a remediation, and to make you complied with, with the timeline of your compliance regulatory with the PCI, HIPAA, SOC, FISMA, all that is getting addressed by the security operation team. Now, as we said, it's all built in use cases. We know 80% of the threat vectors are common across all the vertical. But if you talk about the 20% is very unique, telcos, uh, your ONG, more from the SCADA, uh, your uh, BFSI, enterprise comment, they are having very unique 20% of the use cases. So depending upon which customer on board for the MSS, they do a complete business requirement mapping session with the customer to understand which use cases are most relevant for your vertical. And it is, and it is, uh, I'm sorry, I missed the last point. Yeah, and it is easy to integrate as what the strength oxide has built in, in, the, in the couple of years is we do have 618 connectors. So we understand how we need to collaborate, how we need to ingest the data because each device is having different nomenclature, different schemas. Whether we need to integrate from your on-prem devices, whether you are having services on the microservices on the container, you have hosted application on the cloud, need to take it from the, uh, the cloud service provider, or you have the hybrid environment, you have the virtualized environment. So how we can easily integrate because the security operation monitoring comes once you ingest the data within your security operation engines. So that's what we do. We have those integration capabilities by 618 out of the box connectors, as well as we do have the regex based flex development toolkit, which provide your custom parsing to be done for your homegrown application or any kind of custom devices, which are not natively integrated or available. So just to summarize why micro focus access, as I said, we have seen all the shift of security operation center, the, all the maturity curves when it was starting from the reactive monitoring, it came to a proactive monitoring, predictive monitoring and primitive monitoring. We have seen all the shift. So with all our two decade of the experiences, we collaborated and we learned and made system to be more ease of use, more intuitive and more simplified for the security operation team. We make it more modular platform, best of the breed of the solution. So customer can pick and choose, customize what is relevant for my organization to defend against the cyber threat. You don't need to buy, you just need to take a platform. It's a flagship platform. And on top of it, you can add up the module of your interest as when you require. We, we know because of the, the, the optimization of the compute requirement and the resiliency, the microservices container framework is getting adopted even the on-prem data centers as well as in the cloud. So our complete security operations center SIM solution is available on the container deployment framework. And it is using our the community's Docker. So we do have our own CDF deployment, which can be used by customer. But in case if customer is already having the containerized environment, 
we can we can live with our solution to get installed and get onboarded in the CTO. It's not only about uh, executing a security operation. The true value comes when the customer acknowledge the, and getting a true value from, from the use cases which was signed off during the project installation. So we, we did a practice to understand what is your takeaway you want to take it out from your security operation, whether you are more focusing on your IT operation to get simplified, you want your business to be, uh, you, you have some business driver which need to be addressed from security operation. It is more about your compliance driven requirement where you have to adhere the regulatory requirement, having all the data be available for the codes. So what is your requirement? And we put all these requirement to make it a successful deployment and get the concurrence from the customer to make it a successful you know, project execution. And it is, it is a rigorous activities of quarterly or the half yearly or the annually doing the assessment about their security operation. And that is what making to our partners. So what we do have with our, with the kind of complete uh, tenure in the, in the security operation, we have built a very strong partner ecosystem which can deploy and the run as a ONM. So in many of the cases, they do, you do not have the, the in-house capability to manage and run your security operation. You can have the partner skill, so, uh, skill set to be used to provide all your ONM. And as I said, you know, we keeps on connecting customer on the assessment, on the health check, on suggesting what is new, what has to be upgraded, what is other new capabilities added into the, the portfolio? So that is what is giving our recurring business model for the existing account and customer has scaled tremendously. We have seen many of the customer which was on 20,000 of the EPS requirement and scaled to 200K of the EPS. So 10X kind of growth we have seen in the, in the kind of uh, uh, complete connect with the customer. For, for the India specifically as a region, we do have a regional back, backing from our professional services and the technical supporting. We do have a technical support uh, you know, center based on in Bangalore and the professional services to own and provide governance for your complete project to make it successful and to get executed end to end. Neeraj, and, can you hear me? Yeah, you're audible. So Neeraj, hi, thank you so much for uh, uh, giving uh, the insight for uh, ArcSight and how Microfocus is playing such a pivotal role in, in you know, uh, current internet world, which is... Um, which is I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Amit, uh, just, just one moment. Uh, Neeraj, were you still going on or I, I lost track because I was doing something? So is the, is the Q&A open or you are still presenting? Uh, uh, just about to cover the last pointers and then we Great. can open Amit, the house for the q &A. Sure. Let's hold so on for, let him finish and then we'll get to Q&A. Okay. So sorry, Vikas. No problems. No problems, Amit. Go ahead, Neeraj. Thanks. 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 So what we have done, you know, we, we build the, the industry experiences from all the domain, what we have collected. And that is basically, we can talk about the customer. What are the relevant use cases for your domain? So when we are going with a standard way of just uh, projecting, implementing security operation, it will not work because that is common across, standard across all the platform. We do have 15, 20 years of the industry experience resources in the professional services, which educate and share their learning about what use cases more relevant, what uh, use cases we have executed into different projects of your same vertical and how it can benefit, what you have to be covered and carved out as must have use cases, should have use cases and good to have use cases. And that's give a, a clear cut the return on security investment to the customer at the end of the day. So that is what, you know, we have built as a strategy to take it forward. So yeah, because I am through and uh, we can open the house for the Q and A. Perfect. Sounds good. Great timing. 1150. That's what was written on the, on the, you know, opening slides that 1150 is the time. So yeah, great, great session here. Let's open Q and A and Amit always ask great questions. Sorry, Amit, bye. Uh, I had to interrupt in between, but now please go ahead. Ask your question. Sure. Thank you, Vikas, for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, Neeraj, for, for such a great insight session. And this is one of the topics specifically, you know, CISOs and head of information security. It's, it's a pretty challenging uh, time. Uh, my, my question is, is uh, from a real life scenario perspective, uh, if you can elaborate on how ArcSight multiple security analytic tools 
and automation actually helped in identifying critical log 4j vulnerability that actually hit the internet a few days back across the world and how does it actually help in reducing the exposure time got it so thanks thanks amit thanks for the great question so what happened you no know, as you rightly mentioned the log 4j uh, which when when came to the notice and all the company are struggling to first of all make a defensive system safeguarding their application with a vulnerability so what we 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 came because it it was no application vendor was ready to full proof defend against this log 4j we we came with a complete content first of all within the security operation center how you can have a 360 degree monitoring about your log 4j so we do have our marketplace which is a kind of app store and having the complete content around you know the cyber the, the different dashlets dashboards and the reporting the alerts of you know if there would be any log 4j attack then you will get prompted and you can take the response actions so those kind of content was not something which has to be security operation thing to be craft and to be built from the scratch it was already available for all our oxide customer to just simply import as a package into the engine and they are getting a visibility that is only on the monitoring side of it now the other thing how we are taking action responding to those mitigation so fortify already having the kind of application specific signature which was giving a visibility these applications and which variant of the log 4j identified in your application or your assets now that fortify tool web inspect which is doing the vulnerability assessment and penetration testing giving a complete report and this report is a xml report which is ingested by security operation engine siem and update the cve into the assets now what we have done our the sore engine is identify with the the playbook if there would be any log 4j vulnerability which was updated into my asset which is my financial server any attack any kind of communication identity by by esm which is my correlation engine forwarding alert to the sore sore is executing a playbook and taking the response engine Uh, you can terminate the session you can disable that user access so all those automation the different kind of uh, integration capabilities was available and wired within the same ecosystem so the beauty is because it is part of our complete play, uh, the portfolio so when i have talked about and sashi has covered the cyberdes portfolio the application security powered by fortify taking care of your complete sdlc your code analysis with the static code analyzer analyzing during the code phase development phase while doing the penetration testing black box testing or vapt is getting done by the web inspect so identifying now sore again is the embedded piece taking the response action so cohesively it is completely wired engineered by the micro focus engineering team and we have responded and we have acknowledged our customer during the log fail crisis thank you neeraj great thanks neeraj great question thanks. we can probably take two more questions but short question and short answer guys uh, so so neeraj uh, i can see uh, you know chat box and there's a, a good question asked by mr jik um, he asks how does oxide help in identifying pii and sensitive data in our security logs okay great so, so so what we normally we have seen the there's uh, the zillion of the data which is uh, residing getting ingested onboarded on your security operation but as a as a security analyst as the ciso you're more interested to secure your only sensitive data your intellectual property your uh, personal identification information and that may be uh, if you if you talk about the email id the account number mobile number uid ssn number so anything what you identify and classify as sensitive you don't want to in, encrypt secure cipher the complete data so what we have the good thing with the solution while data is ingested to the security operation oxide having the interfacing component which is connector which is a con- collector transceiver listener and it does the format preserving encryption to ensure only relevant fields which you have classified as a sensitive so i don't want all the field which 50 100 fields i am collecting from your application i only interested into these four fields which is sensitive for me to get cipher saved into my engine and that is something what is getting with the voltage solution 
So oxide connector form it, preserve the, the complete fields which are sensitive, store it. Now, as a security operation analytics, you want to just work on those PII data to be used, consumed for the analytics. So that's pretty much out of the box a solution available and many of our customer onboarded and using this capability to secure and providing the data privacy guidelines for your SOC. There are a few small questions which I will directly answer. Uh, you know, uh, somebody has asked, does it have a UEBA capability? Uh, yes, we did integrate uh, uh, a UEBA in our technology and it can be uh, separately purchased. And there is one, uh, is this for IT and OT both? Yes, we support both. Um, and, and if you have any other questions, uh, question you can ask, um, you can reach out to us, uh, uh, you know, directly and uh, uh, any demo or POC required, we will be more than happy to uh, provide that. Uh, any further questions, uh, you can put it into the chat box. Uh, we'll try and answer it uh, later. Uh, thank you so much uh, again, uh, everyone for uh, joining this session. Uh, my name is Shashi. Uh, as I mentioned, I take care of the pre-sales function for the country in India. And Neeraj uh, is a business development for uh, security operations center solutions um, in micro focus. Uh, and thanks Vikas for uh, 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 inviting us for this particular uh, uh, session and over to you now. Great, great. Uh, overall amazing session, guys. Uh, wonderfully delivered, Neeraj. Uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, we have three minutes. So I will go a little fast now, guys. Okay. So at the beginning, we announced the contest about the LinkedIn, uh, uh, you know, post that we have to do. And the giveaway is uh, Apple Airport. So what you got to do is you have to follow Elite CISO handle. You have to follow MicroFocus handle on LinkedIn and then share your learning on LinkedIn along with the certificate that we are going to share. So how does a successful or a winning post looks like? So this is the winning post from Mr. Kiran Balsilkar from the last week. So last uh, second series, I believe. So uh, he has tagged Elite CISO, he has tagged MicroFocus, he has shared about his learning. He has uh, uploaded the certificate. So that's what you got to do. Put your learning, focus on the, the learning part, you know, and then upload it with the certificate. And how do you get the certificate? You got to go to Elite CISO's website. That is EliteCISO's.com. Go to events, click on upcoming events, and you will come to this page. Over here, click on CP certificate. Once you click on it, this will take you to another page or a Google form like this. And then you have to put your email address over here, put your full name, and the password or secret to download the certificate is HashiCorp, H-A-S-H-I-C-O-R-P. I have also pasted it on the chat. So that's what the certificate is going, that's what the uh, password or the secret is. Why HashiCorp? Because as I mentioned that every week on Thursday, we conduct similar sessions. So next week on 17th of March, one day before Holi, uh, we have a session with HashiCorp and the field CTO of HashiCorp will join and we'll talk about fortifying application and data security in the identity driven uh, workflows, right? So that's a, going to be a very interesting topic and very experienced individual is going to join us. So go ahead and register for it, guys. How do you register? So click over here, register now. This will take you to a page and here you can register. So first 150 people to register for it will be, uh, will be part of something which is called as wheel of fortune. Okay. Only 150, 150 first people who register for it will be part of the elite CISO's wheel of fortune. Why 150? Because over here you see the entries are 598, almost 600 people registered for micro focus event. All those people are here on this list. Okay. What is the change? If you register quickly, the first, first 150 people will be part of wheel of fortune. So your chances of winning is much higher. Okay, with that, um, I'm going to come to the Wheel of Fortune part. Uh, this is something we run every week and we, we pick one winner from all the participants. There are multiple Wheel of Fortune are going to be there today. I will talk about it. So out of this 600 people, one winner will get uh, a smartwatch. Okay, that's what the giveaway is. I request Ashok, sir. Ashok, sir, I'm sure you are there in the session. So once I spin it, if your name comes, guys, 
go to the chat and say yes and ashok sir will track that who has said yes whether you are there in the session or not okay good luck guys i am going to run this session now uh, run this wheel of fortune now great let's see who the first winner is going to be uh, mr jitendra mehta from vipro mr jitendra is the winner for a smart watch mr jitendra if you are there go to the chat and say yes you are there in the session i don't see a yes from mr jitendra mehta nothing yet so yeah so the first one is gone we have four more smart watches to give now the next one is going to be don't say yes just like that guys if your name comes then only say yes okay now i am going to remove all these entries from here and i am going to put only the people who liked elite ciso's youtube channel okay no sachin you cannot claim it i'm sorry so those who liked elite ciso's uh, youtube channel these are those people over here right uh, and we are going to give three smart watches from this list so you can see out of 300 one watch and out of 41 we are going to give away three watches and there is one more after this so hang on guys okay i'm going to run it now this is for the first one so pankaj mishra from um, from i believe indigo now so pankaj if you are there go to the chat and say yes the second watch is gone i am going to spin it for the third one now Mr. Raja Angi Pillai, member of Chennai chapter. Mr. Raja, if you are there, go to the chat and say yes. I am going little fast. Raja is there. Awesome, Raja. Congratulations. I am spinning it for the fourth one now. Great. Let's see. Amit Bhai from Bangalore chapter. Amit Bhai, if you are there, go to the chat and say yes. Amit was the winner of Apple AirPods last time. I don't see Amit Bhai saying yes. So the third fourth one is also gone now for the fifth one fifth one what we are going to do is this is for the people who registered for micro focus tech horoscope summit right tech horoscope summit is starting tomorrow i am going to paste all the people who registered using elite ciso link uh, when the invite was sent i am just copying all the 183 people and i am going to paste it in the wheel of fortune now so this is the last one for people who registered for a uh, micro focus session this is the session i am talking about if you want to register for it the session is tomorrow i am sure you will enjoy it i am putting it again on the chat over here now let me come back to the wheel of our uh, wheel of fortune and i am going to spin it now for the people who registered for the uh, micro focus summit using elite ciso link wait let's see who the winner is going to be So the winner for this one is Gaurav Saxena. Awesome, Gaurav from DHL. Uh, Gaurav, if you are there, go to the chat and say yes. Let me see. Great. So Gaurav is there. Awesome. So congratulations, Gaurav. Great. So those are the giveaways for today. And if you are here on Elite Ciso's website, and if you are joining it for first time, you are not aware about Elite Ciso. So if you are a CIO or Ciso, you can avail Elite Ciso membership. You can go to Elite Ciso website. click on membership and fill this form uh, we only add corporate cios and ciso's in our whatsapp group so if you are a corporate cio ciso go ahead fill this we will add you into the respective city whatsapp group and then apart from it if you are not cio ciso but you would like to attend the knowledge sessions that we deliver go to the subscribe and then you can uh, subscribe to our newsletters and our emails over here last but not the least the only request i have is that for elite ciso we have about 898 subscriber we need 100 more subscriber so that we can go for a youtube live we can stream it live on youtube the minimum requirement is 1000 people my request is i am posting this subscription link over here on the chat please go ahead and subscribe to the channel we upload all the recordings from all the sessions to this channel so it will be great uh, to have your support if we can get to the 1000 mark i'll be are uh, really thankful to you guys okay with this thank you very much everyone uh, we got little delayed uh, 12:05 that i that's what i had said initially uh, thanks for joining see you guys next week great session and uh, thanks for now